So there are a lot of Chrome extensions out there that can act as an autonomous agent to do different actions on the screen based on a prompt. Now, once we go from a web-based environment to a desktop-based environment, we find fewer options that can do the same things for applications, regardless if it's a desktop application or a web application. This is why today we are going to talk about HyperWrite, which is one of the best self-operating computer applications that I found out there. And the intriguing thing about it is that it's open sourced and can operate with different modes. So GPT-4V, which is the default mode, or Gemini ProVision, or a locally hosted Lava through Olama. So it is highly configurable as far as autonomous agents go. We can't do that with every autonomous agents out there. So with that being said, let's jump to my screen and see how we can use it. Okay, so if we wanna install self-operating computer or HyperWrite, just head to this GitHub. I will leave a link in the description below. And come here and then copy pip install self-operating computer. So let's go ahead and open the terminal. And here, let's paste this and leave it to install. I already have it, so I'm just gonna abort it because I already have all the requirements. And now to be able to launch the self-operating computer, you just need to run the command operate. So I'm just going to have operate in here. And this is going to open up a window that is going to ask me for my uh, OpenAI uh, API key. So I'm going to head to OpenAI. I'm going to log in the platform. Choose API and then I'm going to go to API keys. And from here, I'm going to create a new one. So let's call it cell operating computer. So here, I'm going to copy this and I'm going to come here and I am going to paste it. Okay, so I'm going to have this, an experimental framework to enable multi-model uh, to operate computers. I will just click on OK. And here, basically, it would ask me, what can I help you with? So let's start with the very simple question of opening a desktop application and writing something inside of it. So let's say open Word or Microsoft Word and write a poem about uh, digital agents. I'm going to have my hands to myself and let's see if it's going to be able to do this very simple action of opening Word. So, okay, click on Windows, it's opened Word. Let's see if it's going to be able to move the mouse in to open a blank document in order to uh, write the poem that we asked it. Okay, so it didn't detect my graphical card. I think I should have a specific graphic card. So it defaults into my CPU, but it basically has been able to move the mouse to the blank document and we have opened it. And let's see if it's gonna be able to actually write the poem that we asked it. And it's writing. So it's writing inside of the copilot. Uh, it's something that should not be uh, open by default. So I will give it that. If we open Word, it should be like a blank document. But as far as the action that I asked it, it has been able to achieve it. So I would consider that as a success. So it, it's actually very freaky when it starts to move the mouse because uh, normally when we have robots, they just click on the elements uh, directly. They don't move the mouse to go to that place. So we can actually see the GPT-4V in action. And by the way, it's GPT-4V working in this uh, in this uh, in this case because as you can see here, it's GPT-4 with Vision. So it has been able to write it. So it's using my CPU. It should be much faster with the GPU, but it's okay. It has been able to finish this first task. Okay, now let's see if it's going to be able to do a more advanced use case. So let's go ahead and type in operate. Okay, and then let's ask it to open Chrome and search for the weather in New York and then open Word and write the value that it has been able to write. Let's see how it's going to perform in this use case.
Okay, so as far as opening Chrome, it's very good at it. Let's see if it's going to be able to. Okay, weather in New York. So it has opened it. It is slower than usual simply because it's using my CPU rather than a GPU. It cannot detect my GPU that I have on my PC. So that's why it is noticeably slower than other tools that we have used in the past. Okay, now it is opening Word. I suppose it has already remembered the, the, the weather. So let's see. Okay, so it has opened a new document. And now it is writing the weather in New York is 18 degrees Celsius and sunny. So it has been able to finish. It took so much time, but it has been able to write exactly what I asked it. So as far as use case, it is very impressive that it has been able to navigate between a web application and a desktop application and take data from one place to another. Okay, now let's talk about the main takeaways from this video. So as far as simple action go, self-operating computer has no problem doing them. But when the action is more complex, for example, I asked it to open YouTube and go to my channel and then comment something on one of my videos, it always kind of gets stuck at the fact that the URL for YouTube is not written exactly as it has wrote it. So we have to work on the prompt. And even if we work on the prompt, it's not easy to get it to work. So I would say that they still have things to work on because once the autonomous agent is trying to manage exceptions, it's not always doing the right thing and it can't recognize what's happening on the screen. Also, I have uh, noticed that it is a bit slower, especially when doing the first action. Maybe this has to do with my computer and the fact that it can't use my GPU, or maybe we should use other modes, but it was noticeably slower for me, which wasn't the case with other autonomous agents. But as far as potential and as far as the fact that it's open sourced and we can use different modes, this is a huge upside for self-operating computer. One last thing is the usage. So GPT-4V is not cheap. So for example, my usage for today was $3. It's not only the things that I have shown, it's so much more because I try to make YouTube work really hard. I really use different prompts and used it multiple times. So I would say I've used it for a good uh, 15 minutes plus the use cases that you have seen. So that amounted to $3.45, which is not very cheap, I would say, compared to other API calls that we make. For example, if I go to usage and I go to activities, as you can see here, it has 331,000 tokens for 66 requests. So it is not the cheapest of models and that of course is expected okay so other than that i think that it has huge potential we have seen how text to video has went from this to basically this with sora so i would not be surprised if in one year or two years we will have self-operating computers that will have perfect understanding of the context and operate a computer to a human level we're not there yet but we should be very mindful with what's going on and we should be able to basically follow this because in my opinion, that's one of the most important applications for generative AI. And of course, OpenAI is working on their own agents. So it is also important for the big companies in this space. That has been me. Thank you guys for watching and I will catch you guys next time. Peace.